Hi, Anthony. Welcome to our spotlight. Thank you for having me. This is great. So can you tell me a bit more about yourself and about Gemini Solutions and what inspired you to start a company? Anthony Kinsel II, uh, born in Nashville, Tennessee, grew up in Baltimore, Maryland, a civil engineer at heart. I did uh, my undergrad at North Carolina A&T, proud graduate, HBCU Pride, Aggie Pride. And um, it was there that I really started to lean more into the idea of climate change and addressing climate change. I started in high school with watching the Inconvenient Truth, and that was for me where I decided that was how I was going to have an impact, was in uh clean energy and climate change, but I didn't really understand how until I got to A&T. And so after graduating uh, in 2012, I went on to do my master's and PhD in sustainable design and construction at Stanford University. And so I really was able to delve deep into energy efficiency, design of uh, efficient buildings, high performing buildings. And while at, a at, while at Stanford, I, uh, I was able to intern and eventually work at the Allen Group, a construction management firm. And they had me at San Francisco International Airport, where I was helping them with understand and strategize on how to go net zero energy for the whole entire airport campus. But it became very clear to me that kind of as a role and as I was learning, I was doing my PhD, I wanted to have my own thing. I wanted to create something that was addressing the challenges I saw in the, in the energy efficiency space. And that was around the idea of uh, diversity in energy efficiency space and also the focus or lack thereof mm -hmm. uh, within the small commercial space and minority communities in particular. And what I saw was that a lot of companies out there were focused on large scale commercial buildings, but smaller commercial buildings, building, buildings under 25,000 square feet make up over 92% of the commercial building stock and 50% of this commercial energy usage. So it's like, if we're not as an industry focusing on them at all, how are we ever going to reach our climate goals? So that's why I created Gemini Energy Solutions. The core of Gemini Energy Solutions is to democratize the clean energy transition. The best way to give is, is our our core technology conserve, which is focused on the small commercial building space and provides investment grade ASHRAE level two energy audits for commercial buildings. What that means is when we give you a report, you can take that and get a loan to uh, upgrade your building, right? So uh, it gives you kind of the cost analysis, the savings opportunities, as well as kind of what is the net present value? What is the payback period if you were to change your lights or if you to upgrade your HVAC system? So all that's in the report that we provide. And what's unique about us is that uh, we've uh, energy audit actually has three components. It has the data collection, the analysis, and the report writing. And historically, in, in today's industry, you hire one person to do all of it. And it's usually an, it's an energy engineer who understands the energy analysis and then can do the data collection and the report writing. However, that's really costly, right? That's a special kind of skill set. You need not just higher education, but also many years of experience to be that energy engineer. And we just quite frankly, don't have enough of them across the country, nor in anywhere other than dense metro population. So rural America, small towns don't have access to energy engineers to do commercial energy audits. So what we've done is our technology automates the technical side of it and doing so decouples these three components. So now we can hire and train people for individual um, skill sets and, and right size those skill sets. So instead of having to have an energy, energy engineer do everything, we our technology automates the analysis and report writing. And then we hire people locally to do the data collection. We call them data capture specialists. And these folks need a much lower level of um, technical expertise. They can be returning citizens. They can be um, high schoolers or college students, right? It, it drastically increases the, the option pool for people who can do this work, which really just embodies what Gemini is trying to do, which is use the word democratize, which is increase the number of people who can have a meaningful impact in this clean energy transition. And how has your software been received and what impact has it had? What we've been seeing is uh, several impacts. The first is that small commercial businesses can now obtain energy audits, which otherwise before were way too expensive. We're talking thousands of dollars while we're at hundreds of dollars. So a significant drop in cost. Uh, additionally, we've seen uh, nonprofits who are focused on clean energy space or want to be focused in the clean or move into the clean energy space are now able to provide this service to their community where before there was nothing they could do, right? They didn't have someone or they, and they can then afford someone with that level of expertise on their staff. Those have been the two biggest impacts. What we're hoping to move into is impacting utilities and allowing them the opportunity to uh, use our technology to look at it from an enterprise scale and help them in their efforts to decarbonize and electrify the grid by having a better understanding of what's going on on the ground in communities that have been historically hard to reach and hard to serve. And what were the challenges that you faced from the beginning, from the starting of Gemini Solutions, and how have you overcome them? You know, there's the standard challenges of any entrepreneur, right, of any new business, right? But uh, 
uh, being specific to our work was there's a lack of comfort, right, in change around what has already been done, right? So a lot of our work has been convincing folks that we're not trying to replace energy engineers. Um, there's still a need for them, a critical need for them. What we're trying to do is reach the folks that energy engineers were not serving previously. There's also been a lack of belief in the value, right, um, of small businesses, of nonprofits, of faith-based buildings. And there, everyone acknowledges there's a need there, and we all talk about it. But from a business perspective, no one wants to support that work. Everyone says, oh, that's not, not going to bring the most profit, et cetera. So we have this um, kind of tension between what is good business and what is good for the community, what is good for the country, what is good for reaching our climate goals. And so what we've been doing to address that, I guess, let me bring it all home, uh, is, is really showing with our success, disproving this work, right? Disproving the idea that you can't make money by working with these groups. You can't make money with, by working with a black church, or you can't make money with working with a small restaurant or a nonprofit. It's like, that's not the case. You can, you just have to think about it in a different way. You can't, you can't go about it in the, with the same approach, with the same uh, mindset you have. Um, and one of the things about us is how can technology change those dynamics, allowing us to lower the price points, um, streamline the efforts and create more value where in places where it was perceived to be, well, quite frankly, not valuable enough. And can you share a success story? So two, I'll, I'll share one about energy audit and one around what we've also been developing with the, what we call Clean Energy Hub, which I'll talk more about. Um, one success story is a family-owned restaurant, pizzeria in Northern California, but in the, what we call the South Bay. They were really struggling with their bills, right? They had this old, really old equipment and they were actually leasing the space. So they weren't, they didn't own the building. And so we did an energy audit for them of their site. And then we, with that, we worked with them with their building owner to replace the HVAC units of their, of the building. And the owner saw it as beneficial because one, there was um, some financial incentives from the state of California, but two, he recognized that if he didn't do it now and they failed, it's going to be a lot more costly to do an emergency fix than it was to do a planned um, retrofit. And so two years after we did this upgrade and helped and, and introduced them to the contractors to do all the work, I ran into him at a restaurant and he was with some friends and he stopped me and he's like, hey, oh my gosh, um, our bills are so much lower. We were able to electrify the rest of our equipment with this. It's been going great. Thank you so much. So that was like a really great moment to see kind of like two years later, he remembered me and was just like still very excited about the work that we did for them. The other great example is you know, what we're doing with Clean Energy Hubs, which is Conserve actually automates um, and creates a feasibility report for a revenue generating microgrid. That is uh, energy efficiency, solar, battery storage, and EV charging stations. So that now the community anchor that we work with can generate revenue and put it back into the community. Our first um, full demonstration of this is with Glad Tidings Church of God in Christ in Hayward, California. And they are been a great partner over the years in developing this. And we're actually gonna be breaking ground this summer. Uh, so by September, we should ha have everything completed, the charging stations, solar, et cetera. And it's really exciting because we're estimating that oh, roughly $300,000 a year is going to be coming into the community to help accelerate clean energy adoption in this community that has historically not been served with energy efficiency, with solar, and there's been no charging stations in their, in their community. So they're going to be the first to provide charging stations, which we hope will also accelerate people's adoption of electric vehicles, because who wants to purchase an electric vehicle if there's no place to charge where they live? These are all things that we're really excited um, have happened or are happening um, that we think are going to be great examples for others to keep, learn from, replicate, and hopefully um, we can see some significant change in this way, in this movement throughout the country. Thank you for watching New Perspective Spotlight series. If you like our content, please consider subscribing to our social media channel and follow our podcast on your favorite streaming platform. Thanks. Well, thank you, Anthony.